So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. It's nice to be back in Pasadena. I was here in 2008, and before that, I was in Pasadena in 1973, visiting Pierre Brink Hansen, the late Pierre Brink Hansen, at Caltech. Now I'm back here, and it's very pleasant, and I thank the organizers for inviting me. There is a structure of this talk, and I list it here, and you may wish to note that two of the entries have been asterisked by a green asterisk, namely domain, description, and an example. So they will take up a few slides each. The background for this talk, and hence the paper, is the publication of two papers and a book. So it is basically the result of the book in condensed form that you will hear about today. So that was the preliminaries. Now we come to the first essence of domain science and engineering, that of the triptych dogma of software development. Before we can specify software, we must understand the requirements. Before we can prescribe the requirements, we must understand the domain. So we must study, analyze, and describe the domain. And this is what all this is about. So the word domain is crucial and central to all we do here. So we should provide, a, try to provide a proper a description or definition. So by a domain we shall understand a rationally describable segment, a discrete dynamic segment of a human assisted reality, that is the world. It's solid or fluid entities, whether natural or artifactual, and it's living species, whether plants or humans plants or animals. Our approach today will focus on the solid artifacts. Over the last 25 years, I have experimented with understanding a number of domains, some of which are listed on this slide and some of which are listed on the next slide. You can find them all in a Compendium in an approximately 500 page compendium on the internet. Two notions are central to domains, namely endurance and perdurance. I will read the definition of endurance. By an endurance, we shall understand an entity, something which is describable, that can be observed or conceived and described as a complete thing at no matter which given moment of time. Alternative, an entity is an endurant if it is capable of enduring that is, persist. Were we to freeze time, we would still be able to observe the entire entity. By a perdurance, we shall understand an entity for which only a fragment exists if we look at it at any one time. Were we to freeze time, 
we would only see or touch a fragment of the perdurant. So now we can formulate what a domain description is. A do domain description describes to us in both narrative and formal text the types or sorts of entities and the functions over these. More specifically, the domain endurance, their identities, their meriologies and their attributes, and the perdurance, that is the signatures and behaviors. So there is an ontology for the analysis and for the description of domains. On top, you see all the phenomena that we as humans can observe, some of which can be described. That is the subtree to the left in the diagram, some of which cannot be described rationally. That is the small uh, subtree to the right. The entities, those that can be described, are either uh, endurance or perdurance. And the perdurance fall into uh, two kinds. The parts, the solid parts, the solid endurance, or the fluid endurance. The solid endurance, the leftmost subtree in the diagram, are either parts or structures or living species. The structures are abstract forms of parts and we shall not deal with them much. The parts are then either atomic or composite and if they are composite they are either um, compound as Cartesians are or they are sets and if they are sets they are either simple sets of parts of one sort or they are composed of parts of many uh, distinct sorts. So that is the ontology gives rise and reflects both analysis and description functions. The analysis predicates are shown, the analysis calculus is shown on this slide and consists of a number of predicates that I have just covered and a few uh, analysis functions that you see at the bottom of the slide. Similarly, the ontology gives rise to a description calculus. And here we distinguish between describing the external qualities of a domain, those we can see and touch, and the internal qualities, which we shall cover next. So, there are, as you can see on this slide, three kinds of external description um, functions, either describing uh, composite parts, like Cartesians, or in smaller scripts below, either uh, describing the simple sets or the composite sets. I will leave it to you uh, and reading the paper to, to see the details. As for the internal qualities, and there are three. The unique identifiers, uh, the meteorology and the attributes and their schematic description are given on this slide. 
the etc here at the bottom uh, indicates that there is also the analysis and description calculus for the perdurance and we will cover those in the example which now follows. So here's an example. We start with the external qualities and I shall carefully read this slide for you. First, the, we read the narrative lines 1, 2, 3, 4 and then the formula. So the narrative says that the example is taken from road transport systems which embody road aggregates and automobile aggregates. And road aggregates consist of sets of lists, links of, and sets of hubs. Links are like street segments and hubs are like street intersections. An automobile aggregate uh, consists of a set of automobiles. So the formulation, the formalization is then that of giving names to these various types and uh, to present observer functions which given an endurant will yield its composite its components. A notion that is important later on is that of a road transport system state. Here at the bottom of the slide and the state we choose for this example that it consists of all the links and all the hubs and all the automobiles. Those were the external qualities in our example. The internal qualities is a little more detailed. So we ascribe unique identification to only atomic parts in this example. So links and hubs and automobiles have unique identifiers. All identifiers are distinct. And each unique identifier designates a unique part and vice versa. So the lines 6, 7 and 8 as narrative and then below it you have the corresponding formal uh, specification. That was the unique identifiers. Now we cover Meriology. Meriology is the study and knowledge of parts and part relations. We distinguish two part of meriological part relations, topological and conceptual. Link meriologies identify the pair of hubs that the link connects to and the set of automobiles that may run on that link. Hub meriologies identify the set of links imminent or imminent upon the hub and the automobiles that may enter and leave the hub. Automobile meriologies identify the set of links and hubs they may enter. Meriologies identifiers must be identifiers of the road transport system. So we need an axiom and you find the axiom formally expressed below. As last of the internal qualities we have the attributes. Parts have attributes. Part attributes are either physical, measurable, but not necessarily human observable properties, or can be spoken about. 
we mentioned a few attributes. Line links have length. Links have a timestamp history of the automobiles that have entered and driven upon and left the link. We can talk about those without necessarily implying that we measure it. Hubs have a time-stamped history of the automobiles being in the hub. Automobiles have a link or a hub position. position. Automobiles also have a timestamp history of the links and hubs it has visited. So these were the attributes. We now switch to categories of attributes. Michael Jackson, in his delightful book, Software Requirements and Specifications, a lexicon of practice, prejudice, pr principles and prejudice, suggests a categorized, a categorization that we shall use in determining the signature of behaviors. You will see that later coming up. An important notion of a domain is that of intentional pull. Just like we have gravitational pull determining, contributing to the laws of mechanics as Newton formulated them, so we have intentional pull. Like for example, roads are built with the intention of carrying automobiles and automobiles are intended to run on roads. This means to us, and we must therefore formalize it as an axiom of our system, that a link history, that if a link history records the presence of an automobile at a certain time, then the automobile history must record for the same time that it is on that link. Double bookkeeping ratifies is an example of intentional pull. We now switch via this and the next slide to the notion of transcendent transcendental deduction. This is an important concept. I will read it carefully for you. You may not grasp it at first instance, but at least you have an idea what it's about. So by, by being transcendental, we mean the philosophical notion the a priori or intuitive basis of knowledge, independent of experience. A priori knowledge or intu intuition is central. By a priori, we mean that it not only precedes, but that it also determines rational thought. By a transcendental deduction, we mean the philosophical notion of a transcendental conversion of one kind of knowledge into a different kind of knowledge. The idea of transcendental deduction is due to the German philosopher Immanuel Kant from around 1770. Here on this slide, we give an example, an illustration. A train, as it stands on a station platform, represents an endurance. A train, as it speeds along a track, represents a perdurance. 
a timetable for trains represent our attributes. So, in consequence of this, we decide that every part can be transcendentally deduced into a behavior. Links and hops are passive behaviors, automobiles are active behaviors. You, as a programmer, have often performed this kind of transcendental deduction. When you explain to somebody who is looking at your program, you explain by saying, and then the program does this and this. Well, of course, we all know that the program doesn't do anything. It's just a piece of text on the paper. But when subject to execution by a computer, it does something. So now we can treat perdurance more properly. So perdurance, or I should say behaviors, are sets of sequences of actions, events, and behaviors. Obviously, some of these sequences are of length zero, or some of these sets are of cardinality zero. They communicate behaviors, communicate via channels. So the meriology of a system of parts determine uh, the channel structure. And the behaviors themselves can be expressed in the classical the CSP style shown at the bottom of this slide. Channels communicate. And we exemplify this in the style of CSP. And you can see a CSP-like definition here. So the actors were those of actions, events, and behaviors. I shall not uh, go into their signatures, but only to say that the signature of behaviors reflects very much the internal qualities as well as the ex external qualities of, of domain parts. An example of a behavior definition is shown here for the case of an automobile using these uh, sub-language of, of race, and you can see, but I will not go into detail. So that ends my coverage, both of what domain descriptions are and an example of a domain. So, as indicated by the triptych dogma, somehow domains relate to requirements, and that is shown in the book chapter 8, how we successively in small steps um, turn a domain description into a requirements prescription. Similarly, the three books published some years ago show how to go from requirements to software. To finalize this part, the major part, we can summarize that the essence of domain and science engineering uh, consists of the triptych dogma, a basis in philosophy, an interpretation of transcendental deduction, a concept of intentional pull, the interplay between science and engineering, and reliance on continuity. And finally, re remember, domains are not necessarily computable. So we now switch to part two, the consequences of domain science and engineering. <coughs> First, 
there are some open issues and then it's um, relevant to NASA. That's why we're here today. Among the technical issues, there are three that we will cover. There's the issue of a philosophy basis. The question is, what must be in any domain description? Here we follow the philosophy of Kaiser Lander. Space, time are not empirically observed phenomena. They are transcendentally motivated logical necessities. There is an indefinite number of entities and Newton's laws followed by transcendental deduction, etc. This is what must be in any domain description. Unavoidable. There is, of course, the usual issue of the philosophy and metaphysics. Then there is the issue of transcendental deduction. We need to study much further varieties of transcendental deductions. And there is the issue of intentional pull. And we need to study laws of artifactual domains. Financial industry. Money doesn't appear just out of nowhere. Transport, manufacturing, retailing, documents, feeder systems like pipelines, aeronautics and space. So in the relevance to NASA, what could that be? So I will first cover an aeronautics and space domain and then suggest a project. So the aeronautics and space domain is characterized on this and the next slide. Here you see on this slide types of space exploration, earth observation satellites, spy satellites, communication satellites, military satellites, satellite navigation, space telescopes, space exploration, space tourism. Then another facet are stages of exploration. There's typical of something we must, should be able to model in a domain description. There's the launch phase, the cruise phase, the encounter phase, and depending on the state of spacecraft health and mission funding extended experience phase as well as the landing. There are also a number of space technologies, the spacecraft, the satellites, the space stations, the orbital launch, launch and so on. And there are a number of satellites and application remote sensing satellites, navigation satellites, etc., etc. So we are reaching the final parts of this talk by suggesting to you individually or as groups an aeronautics and space uh, control system. It is suggested that the concept of domain science and engineering be applied to either a rational of the whole space as such or to one or several small parts and their collaboration. It's nice, interesting. Non-funded, you could pursue that as a non-fund personal effort or as a funded slightly larger effort.
conclusion is short. A new phase of software development has been suggested. Like for other engineering profession, domain engineering is not only a possibility, it is an interesting precondition for requirements engineering and hence software development. Thank you very much.